This video will talk about the external validity and internal validity of the linear regression model or nonlinear regression model. So in short, it just means that whether we can we have a good estimator to estimate the whole populations or can we use these results to inference the other populations. So first, we will talk about what is the meaning of external and internal validity. Second, we will take a look at the threads and some solution. So let's get started. First, the meaning of external validity is that the inference and conclusion can be generalized from the population to other populations. That means you finish the population of the study of one population, can you use these results to explain the behavior of another population? Say, you collect a data of a university and you compare whether the distance between the hall and the campus is a function of students G GPA okay so you study there are some relations after that can this results explain the behavior of other universities so this is called external validity internal validity the definition is that the statistics inference about the causal effect are valid for the population being studied so we will collect a data to see whether whether the beta one can explain the effect of increasing x relates to increasing y. So we need to have lots of assumptions. The most important assumption is that the expected value of u given x i is equal to zero. So there are also many main assumptions. If we cannot satisfy the assumptions, that means they are not valid internally. So next we are going to see that what is the threat of the internal validity. So the main threat of the external validity is that different populations are different. So maybe this university has different characteristics with the other universities, so they cannot compare the directly. But the threat of the internal validity mainly focus on these assumptions, whether the expected value of the u given x is zero. So basically, you have five threats. The first one is the omitted variable bias. So omitted variable bias have been has already been discussed in the start of the multiple regressions. So it it means that we omit some important variable that is correlated with x i say the true model is this plus vi while you estimate the model by the second equation as a result the error term is equal to beta 2 x 2 i plus vi right then beta 1 it is equal to covariance between x and u derived by the variance between the variance of x and this is equal to covariance of x n so x1 x1 okay beta 2 x2 plus v derived by variance of x1 as a result, this is equal to beta 2 times covariance of x1 and x2 derived by variance of x1. Well, so this is the definite the formula of the omitted variable bias. So the expected value of u given xi is not equal to zero. So how can we solve the problems? So we have three ways. One, you can add the variables. So if the data is if the data is available, why don't you add more variables, right? Right. But what if the what if the data are not available? You need to use a trick called panel data. So you need to make use of the skills of of the panel data. In particular, the fixed event estimation of the panel data can solve this problem. So the last solution is using the IV. IV estimation estimations. 
So IV is another panel data method to solve the problem of orbital variable bias. So I will talk about the panel data and IV in, in the future videos. So these two are very useful. So the next threat to internal validity is the misspecification of functional form. So this is very simple. Say the true population model is a linear is a square or a cubic term, but you just use linear term, so it caused some problems. So the solution is to just you need to use non-linear functions and use the F test or T test to see which power is sufficient to explain the populations. The third one is called the measurement error. So by the name, you know that okay, you estimate the data wrongly. Say, the data showing all the heights of the students, maybe they are 1 meter, 2 meter. Why do you estimate to be 2 meter and 3 meters? So you estimate it wrongly. Okay, so how to use mathematical to prove that this is not, so this will pose threat to the estimations. Okay. Say, the true model is beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus u 1. x i plus u i. Okay, x i plus u i. While, okay, you measure the x wrongly and you measure the x as x tutor where x tutor is not equal to xi say the true value is 100 and you measure it by 50 then it's not correct as a result your estimation will become something like this while the vi is equal to beta 1 x i minus x tilde plus u i so you estimate it wrongly so to be more mathematically proof okay i use more mathematics to prove it assume x i is equal to x i plus w i so this is the true value this this is the measurement error okay you you measure it wrongly by this by w amount and assume the correlation between wi and xi is zero. The true value and the measurement error are not correlated, and the correlation between w and u are also zero. Okay, so in this case, the vi is equal to beta 1 xi minus x tilde plus ui. So this is equal to negative beta 1 w i plus u i. Okay. So how about what is the value of covariance between x i tilde and w i? Okay. So this is just equal to what is x tilde? x tilde is x i plus w i. So this is equal to covariance of x i w i plus covariance of wi and wi since we assume that this is equal to zero by the correlation zero correlation so what is remaining is just co covariance between wi and wi and this is variance of wi okay so the covariance between xi and vi this is equal to covariance of x i tilter what is v i v i is this beta 1 x i minus x tilter plus u i so this is equal to covariance of x i tilter negative beta 1 w i plus u i okay because x tutor is x i plus w i, so you minus here become negative beta w i plus u i. As a result, the covariance between these two terms is negative beta one covariance x i tilter and w i plus u i.
plus the covariance of xi tutor and ui so this is zero and what is remaining the left hand side is negative beta one variance of w i so this is proved by the previous results okay so in our omitted variable bias cases you know in your base in our beta one yeah, in the omitted variable bias chapter we have learned that beta one will goes to beta one here it goes to beta one plus the covariance correlation between x and u times the sd of u divided by sd of x so we can apply the same skills here so we have the definition that the correlation of two variables is just equal to covariance of the that two variable derived by the standard deviation of one and standard deviation of two all right so this correlation is just equal to the covariance divided by the standard deviation of each variables so in our example beta 1 hat will be equal to beta 1 minus beta 1 times variance of w square divided by variance of x i tutor square why this is the case so I just replace this correlation by covariance of xi tutor and vi then derived by the standard deviation of xi tutor times standard deviation of v then what is the variance of u in our example this is just variance of v then derived by variance of x tutor so this then this can be cancelled so the remaining is the covariance between x and v that is negative beta 1 variance of w so this negative beta 1 variance of w derived by the denominator variance of xi tutor square okay so by collecting the terms this is equal to beta 1 minus beta 1 times variance of w derived by variance of w square variance of w plus variance of x okay because x i tutor is just equal to w i plus x i so i replace the tutor in these two terms then by collecting the term this is equal to variance of x derived by variance of x plus variance of w beta 1 okay then here you can see that variance of w is the measurement error how large is the measurement error right so if if variance of w is zero that means there are no measurement error beta one hat is actually going to one this variance of x divided by variance of x only so if there are no measurement error beta one hat is equal to beta one but if there are very large measurement error let's go to extreme infinity so beta one hat is goes to zero. So this is so this cause problems, right? So the measurement error, the sigma w square here is a mathematical way to show that larger the measurement error, beta one hat will not be equal to beta one. Okay. So they are last two breaths. The fourth press is the sample selection bias. So sample se selection bias by the name, and you know that this means you select a wrong sample in the in the spring in the population. Then you are going to see that whether the entering the university can increase the height of the students. Then you collect all the data, right? But you just focus on the basketball team. Then as a result, the the predictive power will be biased another example is that you want to show whether the mutual fund manager can really beat the market so you collect the data of the mutual fund managers in the different data and you found that hey, the fund manager really beat the market but you have forgot that okay 
for the for those fund manager that is good uh, they cannot pick a last one they may call they may just call back and we can match up the position So the solution of tackling this sample selection bias is actually very few. Well, this is out of my scope of my knowledge, but I don't mind that after several years I learned new concept and I share it here again. But what I know is that you can use something called the maximum likelihood to deal with these problems. So you need to estimate the number of fund managers that is called that is closed then you do the regression problem so the last threat to the internal val validity is the simultaneous causality so it means that so given some exact given a specific example to you is better y i equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x i plus u i while x i is ga ga something like gamma 0 plus gamma 1 y i plus v i so here is means that x will affect y while y will also affect x so this is something like the demand supply theory so the price will affect the demand while the demand will again affect the price so again in this case the covariance between the x and u is also not, also not zero so say i want to calculate the covari covariance between x i and u i so this is equal to covariance of gamma 0 plus gamma 1 y i plus v i and u i and this is equal to gamma 1 times covariance of y i and u i plus covariance of v i and u i for simplicity assume this is zero but what is the left hand side? This is equal to gamma 1 times covariance of beta 0 plus beta 1 x i plus u i and u i. So this is equal to gamma 1 beta 1 covariance of x i and u i plus gamma 1 the variance of u i okay then you can put this covariance term to the left hand side so this is covariance of x i u i times 1 minus gamma 1 beta 1 equal to gamma 1 the variance of u i so you can see the covariance between u i x and x i is equal to some non-zero number So again, this violates the assumptions. So the solution is again using the panel data method, in particular using IV. IV stands for instrumental variables. So later we will talk about the concept about the panel data.